I think one of the things to um, overcome the fears of, of structural bodies is actually to demonstrate that there is a shared agenda. Um, and there's, there's two things which, which I can point to. One is that a few years ago there was research done across the Northwest looking at work within uh, faith organisations generally outside their worshipping activities. And what it showed was the considerable overlap between, first of all, between areas of deprivation and the concentration of faith bodies, particularly churches. But it also shared, showed that a lot of uh, faith organisations are actually doing things which statutory bodies want doing. But they haven't necessarily recognised that before on either side. And one of the values of this uh, the, the, the research was that it actually gave a shared vocabulary. Uh, and it showed that um, church groups were quite often doing, as I say, exactly what they uh, wanted. And if they learned some of the vocabulary, they, what they could do was, was instigate a partnership without any compromise on their part at all. It was actually what they, you know, they'd been speaking prose all their life, so to speak, without recognising it. Uh, and this was a very valuable thing to do. The second thing is that uh, in 2010, just uh, a few months before the, uh, the general election, government produced uh, a, a very short document, myth busting, I might say that, M-Y-T-H busting, um, actually addressed to potential public sector funders to say, look at faith organisations in terms of the service that they give and judge them in the way that you would judge any other voluntary sector organisation. It's a very useful two sides bit of paper which you can still uh, still get hold of uh, and, and I'd recommend it to both sides to, to make use of.